Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today I'm going to be doing a little comparison video of the Jobo CPE line and the CPP line. Um, it's not going to go fully into details comparing every single spec. If you want that, I will make a future video on both with a lot more information. But this here is the CPE2 and I want to give you general ideas of why maybe one suits you better than others. Uh, it's probably the most asked question online is what Jobo is best for me? Why is this one? How big is it? Does it fit under my bed and all these things? So here we have a Jobo CPE2 and this is the vintage edition. The newer one is the CPE3, but the footprint and everything is basically the same. So as you can see, basically takes around 80 to 70 centimeters and I'll put the measurements if you want on the screen. Uh, not too big, so as you can see, it's kind of like a little bathtub. This one does not come with the lift, but this comes with the magnet. So it has a magnet bottom, which basically attaches to the drums on the bottom. And then this just goes in here, attach, whoop, and that would just spin. Without the lift, it's a little bit more uncomfortable because every time you have to take off the tank, take off this plastic lid, and reload your chemistry and put it back on and press the button again so you can continue developing. I highly recommend the lift. It doesn't make it much bigger, maybe like twice as tall and just a little bit more. And it lets you, you know, recycle the liquids and all of that. This machine to me is the biggest one for the big aficionado that's, you know, developing film, maybe doing some sheet film and some prints. This is the Jobo tank for prints. You can do up to 12 by 16 inch, 30 by 40 centimeters if you're doing RA4, black and white with very small chemical use. And if you're doing rolls, this will let you do 35, 120, 4 by 5 with the tank 25, 20. And it won't be able to do 8 by 10 unless you use one of these paper drums and it's not really meant to be used. For that, we have the CPP3 line or the CPA2. You know, the CPA2, CPP2, CPP3 are all the same and they're bulkier. So this one here, as I said, is the CPE2. It uses four little tanks of 16 milliliter chemistry. Let me show you guys. These are teeny little tanks. This one's actually brand new. And these little beakers that are 260 milliliters, even though all the Jobo tanks use 270. I wish they would have done the 70 but you can kind of like guess it or use a little marker sharpie. So yeah, this is the CPE2. Let me bring the CPP3. So this is the CPP3. As you can see, it's much taller. It's basically like a meter long. You can't see my right hand, but it's here. It's like up to here. Um, it's, I can lift it up, but it's way heavier as you can see. And this one uses one liter bottles. So these are one liter bottles. This is the one I currently use is the CPP3. It has the lift in it and you will see in the lift there's two little um, drains basically. The bottom drain which is used for the smaller tanks uh, when they're in the lower position and the tall uh, little you know plug that you can take off and use this drain. That is what you use for expert tanks. So this machine has a longer base, so you can use bigger paper if you wanna do paper, and you can also do ultra large format film. You can do up to 20 by 24 inches in expert tanks, and this is an expert tank 3005. This one will do five eight by 10, so this basically would go here, and it goes into there, and it spins one way. One thing it does do is it lets you uh, rotate this tank slower, so 50 RPM instead of 75 RPM, and more chemistry. The engine is also stronger, so I can move the chemistry more comfortably. The CPE2 has less strength, so if you overload it, you're gonna end up burning the motor. So basically, you can see the CPP3 is not for everyone, but if you're doing expert tanks and stuff like that, let me open this one. Oh, these are the expert tanks. As you can see, it looks like a bazooka. It's four or five sheets of eight by 10, and actually you can also do four by uh, 10 in here. That was a question on Facebook the other day, but this is a great tank for large format film. Five sheets in one go with less than one liter. I usually use one liter just to be safe, but it's the best thing. So if you have the space, the CPP3 is a great machine, but you do have to have the space, the strength to lift it if you're going to move it around, 
the liquids and everything is just a bigger footprint. It also has the four 260 milliliter beakers, which I don't have on the machine right now. Six chemicals uh, can go, so you can have like, I have water, developer, stop, fix, and then usually I have another run of water, another run of developer, so I can continuously go. It has these extra wheels, so like if you are using bigger tanks, you can put them on the back here, so the whole tank is sitting. It has a higher uh, water bath, so you can have it. This one also intakes water to cool down the system. The other one doesn't. So the other one, you have to fill it in yourself, empty it out yourself. I actually even put a little aquarium uh, pump so it circulates the water. This one has it built in. It actually comes out through here. It has a little exit on the bottom here, which you can barely see. Let me see if I can show you guys. But you see that's the bottom. It has a little hose where you can also take that off with the lift, same thing as the other one. You can pour them in through here. But yeah, basically if you're thinking of doing ultra large format or large format eight by 10 and such, this is the machine you want. The CPP3, CPP2, CPA, CPA2. They are kind of confusing, but it kind of makes sense once you get used to the Jobo tanks. So if you have any questions about the Jobo tanks, which one you need, which one you don't need, the reels and all that, I'm a highly, um, you know, expert or self-taught expert about Jobo. Also, you want to check Jobo USA. Uh, Cat Labs of JP sells Jobo machines and is the official importer. He knows a ton about them too and repairs them and knows about the engines and the serials, which are also important. So yeah, basically I wanted to show you a little bit of both machines, the differences in size, the differences of what you could do. This one, as I said, can do up to 20 by 24 inch paper or film. The other one can do up to 12 by 16 paper or film. And uh, they both do 120, 35 and such, 222 if you still have some, 220. Same thing, you can all do uh, color, you can do E6, you can do, uh, you can do black and white, paper, color paper, RA4 with both of them. This one does have a little computer, kind of helps you out to warm it up, to cool it down and all that. You can program what you're doing. The other one is basically a dummy. You need a timer and set your own times, but that's, Fairly similar because with this one, it does it itself. The other one, you do it yourself, but it doesn't change so much. It's more the physical capacity to me that what changes with these machines. So yeah, they're also extremely expensive, but they're secondhand, they're pretty inexpensive, but they do last forever. And that's something I've said many times on Jobo. You pay once, but you live with that machine for years and years and years. Most of the machines in the market nowadays are even still said uh, to be made on West Germany, so or East Germany, I'm not sure right now, uh, East Germany, I think. So they're still running and working fine. So don't be scared to purchase one new, they will run forever. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions about Jobo, which I'm sure there are, you can let me know, maybe give me a priority, what do you wanna see first with the Jobo machines? And I'll try to work on those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.